All right, let's look at <clears throat> this problem right here. Block D slides, uh, moves in the figure at three meters per second. Uh, so if it's moving at three meters per second, what's the angular velocity of link BD and angular velocity for link AB? All right, so do you see that <clears throat> BD is my main bar? You know, BD is the bar that it, that's not in pure rotation. Uh, it's not it's not rotating about D, not rotating about B. Um, now, bar AB is in pure rotation. It's, it, there's no need to uh, overcomplicate bar AB, <clears throat> but bar BD is my main bar. Let's find the instantaneous center for bar BD. Well, first, uh, step one, let's draw these velocity vectors. I know that that velocity vector is going right there because it's confined along the slot. All right, and then how about this velocity vector for point B? <clears throat> It is not, con the, the direction of point B is not controlled by this blue bar. Let's just throw it away. The direction for point B is controlled by link AB. If link AB, you know, throw away bar BD. If link AB is, is fixed right here, controlled right there, what is the direction for bar <coughs> B? Uh, well, it would be if the link is 45 degrees from horizontal, this would be 45 degrees from, this, all right, no, 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 well, 45 degrees doesn't matter, but this would be 45 degrees from vertical, 45 degrees from vertical, all right? So then <clears throat> I would draw lines that are perpendicular to those velocity vectors, all right? And so if my velocity vector right here is 45 degrees from vertical, my radial line would be 45 degrees from horizontal. And so when you have links, links are radial lines. Correct? Does that make sense? Let that sink in. The links, links that are fixed, pinned at one end, <clears throat> that is a radial line. The velocity is perpendicular to it, so if you want something perpendicular to velocity, you're back at the radial line. So if you have a, a link that is pinned at one end, it is your um, radial line. So there's your instantaneous center. So now I need to find, I'll call this RD, the distance that D is right here, and let me find this distance RB. <clears throat> so let me look at this. Uh, I like to kind of look at this triangle right here. <clears throat> let me look at that triangle right here. I know one side of that triangle is 0.4. Uh, if that is 45 degrees, then that needs to add up to 90, so that one's 45 degrees. Uh, and then also, there are a number of ways to think about this and do this, but I would look at this large outer triangle. If that is 45 degrees and 90, then that is 45 degrees. So this one, you know, you, you won't always have a <clears throat> one as easy as this, but it's a 45-45 Tri 90 triangle. It's a right triangle. For right triangles, you can just use cosine uh, and sine. So let me look at this angle. Cosine 45 is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse RD. So RD 0.5657. And then let me do uh, tangent or something like that. Tangent of this 45 degree angle right here would be, sorry, tangent of this 45 degree angle <clears throat> would be our B over 0.4, right? Opposite over adjacent. And so our B would be 0.4. It's a 45, 45, uh, 90 triangle. All right. So there are, are my RB and RD. And, and that was really just the prep work before we get into the main part of the problem. But that's the hardest part of the problem. Now, all we're using is V equals R omega. V equals R omega. <clears throat> but let's kind of see, where, where should we start? Where should we start? Well, let's start right here. It, it gave us that velocity of D right here. So I'm going to look at this imaginary disk and the imaginary disk is what bar 
BD is, you know, glued onto at this instant. <coughs> this is the instantaneous center. So I'm going to look at that disc, and I'm going to say V equals R omega. I'm going to say that VD, because I know D equals RD omega of BD. So 3 is equal to 0.5657 omega BD. Use that to find that the omega of BD is 5.3 radians per second. Now, that's not ever going to come out positive or negative. I mean, you know, it's always going to come out positive. I need to specify, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, if I know that po this point is going to the right here, and I know that its center of rotation at this instant is up there, then <clears throat> that would mean this imaginary disk is going uh, counterclockwise. So this would be 5.3 radians per second counterclockwise. Okay. Now, you know, eventually I want to get to bar AB. And so see if this makes sense. Uh, let me stay on this disk and let me do VB equals RB. But I'm still on the disk, so I'm still going to use this rigid body angular velocity of 5.3. The omega of BD is 5.3. So I know those two. Now I can find the velocity of B. Velocity of B equals 0.4 uh, times 5.3. So the velocity of B, 2.12 meters per second. That's not going to come out negative. I've got, to, I've got to visualize that direction myself. So if I know that this disk, this imaginary disk, is centered up here, is going counterclockwise, then that means this would be going down and to the right. Now I'm going to take this kind of like a gear. <clears throat> I'm going to take this. I, I was looking at that velocity of point B on the imaginary disk. Let me look at bar AB and still V equals R omega. I'm still going to look at VB. Now I'm going to look at R omega of AB and the R that... The distance that B is away from its center of rotation on bar AB. Where's the center of rotation of bar, bar AB down here at A? How far is B away? Uh, point 0.4. So, <clears throat> so now I, I can take that velocity. If I know the velocity and I know the R, now I can find omega of AB. So this is 2.12 equals 0.4 omega AB. <clears throat> omega a b uh yeah it's going to turn out to be something that we already have before but it definitely will not always be that way <coughs> this is this way because it's a 45 45 um and both of those links were 0.4 uh but anyway this omega of a b is going to be 5.3 uh but i've got to specify clockwise or counterclockwise all right because this one is going that way, I know this one is rotating that way. If this one's rotating that way, I know that point B is going down here. So if point B is going down, then that means that this bar is actually rotating uh, clockwise. This bar is rotating clockwise. And so there I've answered the question. These definitely will not usually come out to be the same. This is a special case, 45 degree angles with both lengths are 0.4. This is only true at this instant. This is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Only true at this instant. But let's step back and look back at what we did. <clears throat> we wanted to use the instantaneous center for method for bar BD, so we need to find the where is the instantaneous center for bar BD. Well, draw the velocity vectors, draw dotted uh, radial lines that are perpendicular to velocity vectors, see where they intersect, and find those R's. This one was a right angle. A right triangle uh, so I could just use cosine and tangent to find those angles once I found those angles then let's kind of step back and look at what we use we looked at the imaginary disk and did V equals R Omega we stayed on the imaginary disk and did V of a different point equals R of a different point Omega but then we stayed at that point but looked at a different rigid body look at the equations we use we use VD equals RD Omega BD and then we stayed on that rigid body to find VB. 
And then we stayed on that point, but a different rigid body to, to find the, the um, omega of the different one. It's almost like we just snaked our way through this problem, you know. Only equation that we used after we found those instantaneous centers, <coughs> distances, was V equals R omega. V equals R omega. And I think it's helpful to write, okay, what, what object am I looking at? So that you make sure you use the correct angular velocity for that object. And so we're just going to snake our way through these problems using V equals R omega. Pretty cool, right?